Okay. Yeah. So um, so uh, let's pick a, a review. Uh, so if anyone has uh, any good candidates, so Tomas, for instance, uh, if there's any ones uh, that you think are interesting. I'm thinking. Maybe the auto configure in you with bottom controller we, uh, that I'm not really sure why it's waiting for so long. It's a bug fix. Okay. I'm biased, of course, because it's mine. Okay, so can you me. explain the problem first? So as you can see, this, this is also a good example for a workflow. Uh, I first, uh, f we found an issue in the testbed. So this was uh, opened by, uh, I think it was opened by uh, Rafael. Uh, so it was a bug and we have logs to the own cloud. So we see the issue. Uh, the issue was that uh, all tests with bottom controller sometimes failed. It was saying no auto configuration WSC message with M2 found. Uh, after the auto configure new uh, test, it uh, sometimes reproduced, sometimes not. Uh, so I opened the, I, I think I opened the issue. I'm sorry. Uh, these are the logs, so we can open one of the logs and uh, have a look. Okay, so uh, let's go into the log. Yeah, this log. One thing that is a uh, bit uh, annoying in own cloud is that you can't open the file, text file online. You have to download it every time. Yeah. Yeah, so go to the end. So here we can see, go, go to the end. This is the end. Yes, so this is the end, okay. So you can see that it is saying no auto configuration uh, WSC message with M2 found. So if you remember from Coral's uh, lecture, uh, we send M1 and we expect to get an M2. And in this case, uh, the, the controller, which is a certified controller, simply did not respond. So now we can open the Wireshark log and see if there was an auto config uh, M2. Uh, and then uh, you can go back to on cloud, uh, go uh, one folder back. No, it's not this one. One folder up, uh, pick up. And let's open the, is the, which one of them is the, all, all of the steps? Uh, yeah, good question. <laughs> there should be one which is all of the steps. Maybe it's not taken. Anyway, so I reproduced it. Uh, I, I reproduced the... Uh, I reproduced it locally and uh, I saw, what I saw is that uh, if, you, if you go a bit down, uh, after auto configuration is sent by the performance controller, uh, we immediately sent the M1, uh, which goes without an answer. And if you remember from the auto config uh, lecture by Coral, uh, the controller should answer after one second. We didn't resend the M1. There is a 30 second timeout for the next try. Uh, and uh, after the 30 second timeout, the test already failed. By the time we sent the next try of the auto config uh, M1, uh, we got the M2 from the controller. So actually we, neither, neither us, Purple Mesh, nor the controller, Broadcom, uh, worked according to the specification. Because the specification says that the auto config uh, M2 should come after one second, and it didn't come after one second. It didn't come at all. And it also said that the agent should, should retry uh, after one second until it, until it succeeds. And we didn't retry, we retried after 30 seconds. So uh, then I added a, a test. I just, uh, I reproduced the, the same thing in the, in the test bed again. And uh, I added a simple test that uh, we just retry immediately. 
and then it passed. Uh, so eventually what I did is uh, just change the timeout. Uh, the, this is the state timeout. Where, when we are waiting for, wait for joint respond is basically the state that we are waiting for uh, the autoconfig M2. Uh, so I just uh, changed the timeout to be five. Uh, I didn't change it to be one uh, because one is uh, uh, because basically the, as our note said in a comment, uh, the IEEE transport should uh, take care of retransmissions. So in case of uh, no answer, the 1905 transport will uh, uh, retransmit uh, three times. Uh, and then the higher level, uh, which is uh, the purple mesh agent, will just read we send the entire message uh, on its own if all the three retransmissions of the same message fail. Uh, didn't, didn't, weren't resolved with the uh, M2. So, yeah, that's, this is it. This is the review. So, uh, if you like, you can approve it, and then uh, yes, um, it will be made. And uh, one yeah. more thing that you should see, go ahead and look at checks. Click on checks. Uh, where is the GitLab? It doesn't show the GitLab here. If you go to the conversation, for some reason, it doesn't show the GitLab on our checks. In the conversation, yeah, you get five checks, and then when you go to checks, it's not it's not there. Yeah. So if you, now, so if you go to checks, if you, you see five successful checks, then GitLab is there, but if you go to the checks tab, it's not there. Yeah. It's uh, strange. <laughs> Stupid. So anyway, as you can see, uh, go a bit down, you see that run certification is there right so you can click on run certification i just this is what i did because i i knew that this test uh, was failing 443 uh, versions because it happens after uh, autoconfig renew for some uh, reason so i just tested uh, all of the variants and made sure that they are all passed one after the other uh, so this again uh, was my uh, part of the workflow that uh, I had to do because uh, I don't have a board farm and uh, any uh, real test case uh, to reproduce it with. Even with board farm, actually, in this case, we had to use a real agent because uh, th this is an agent that uh, was not responding with the first try. So we, we could actually add a, a test for this in test flows. Uh, perhaps we should, I don't know, uh, that's it. Does it mean that it only uh, causes the test to fail occasionally or all the time? Yes, occasionally. We saw it uh, for, for time to time uh, that uh, 443 was failing and uh, it just means that uh, for time to time uh, the Broadcom agent simply doesn't uh, respond to the M1, even though we send it. Uh, but according to the specification, this can happen and we should send it again after one second. Uh, and uh, I decided to send it after five because we still don't have the low level uh, retransmissions uh, implemented in the transport. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, so uh, now I've approved it, so it has the approval that needs to merge. So merge file should take care of it. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, because and I didn't we, see merge. Do we now, do we now have um, a ready, ready for, for merge it. stack? Yes, yeah. ready for merge stack, yeah. Okay. There we go. Great. So, if you want so, yeah, to um, do another pull request, uh, let's see what uh, what else is up there. Uh, yeah, just uh, yeah. yeah. So, 
let's look at the um, download IPK. I, I, I can give uh, my, uh, if anyone else has a different pull request that is easy to review and wants to uh, use this forum to get his uh, pull request reviewed, then by all means, go ahead. If not, I will just keep on getting my pull requests approved. <laughs> I'm sorry, Tomer, this is an uh, IPK package with the latest uh, purple mesh. This, this, is the, this is a pull request to download, to download the latest purple mesh IPK from GitLab. So ah, I can... Uh -huh. So this is something that we, we the, the motivation for this pull request is uh, this. Uh, we decided that in uh, in uh, in the in the CI we won't have the, the bandwidth to test everything, and since we have the testbed in Israel and testbed in Bangalore uh, in the future, we want to have uh, some sort of uh, cron job that will uh, allow us to download the IPK that will basically download the latest uh, purple mesh and deploy it to the uh, RAC policy mm -hmm. and then run the tests. Okay, so okay. this can be used for a uh, uh, test bed and this also can be used for the uh, lady. Instead of, you don't need to build ever. You don't need to build purple mesh because in the CI, you, in the, in the, even if, even in the old farm, for example, you want to run both farm on the latest code, simply use this script to download the latest IPK, and use a different script, script to deploy the IPK to the target, and then you can start running both farm. So both farm doesn't need to natively support it. Uh, so this script is, uh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah, continue please. I'll ask later. So uh, basically yeah, um, this so script is not, yeah, go ahead. So um, just to clarify for Ram, uh, as far as I know, um, an IPK is a bit like a, a dot .dev or dot .rpm package for Debian or Red Hat or things like that. So it's just a, a package to, uh, to just install the whole um, purple mesh and, and all, of the, all of the files that it uses uh, on, uh, on targets, right? Yeah, yeah as, I understood, as I understood, we can download this IPK from GitLab, uh, push it to the uh, our racks for the board, for example, and just use uh, all OPK uh, utility or tool for installing this package. Yes. Okay. Exactly. But uh, what about OpenWRT version and updates? So uh, we can get situation when we have a uh, lattice purple mesh and old OpenWRT or old uh, drivers, uh, wave drive. Wi-Fi drivers for export, for example, and new. The, the idea, the idea is basically that uh, uh, we, as a community, we are not uh, uh, play, uh, replacing the firmware uh, very often. Actually, we didn't replace the Rax40 firmware for the last uh, more than three months, I think, Rafael. Correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, yes. Something like yes. that. So basically, if you're familiar with the uh, GA and the uh, third in Intel, so yeah, uh, yeah, I saw GA in the Intel, and I know how it works. So, so basically, GA uh, for anyone not from Intel is the general acceptance, and this is basically uh, Intel's delivery. Uh, inside in Intel, we are uh, implementing the version uh, very rapidly. Uh, every day, there is change to Wi-Fi, and things get broken. Uh, but uh, every half a year or every four months or something like this depends. Uh, there is a GA version which is, uh, gets tested uh, over a course of two months and uh, should be very, very stable. Uh, the thing is that we as a community developing open source software, we don't want anything else other than the GA version. So we want the, G the latest and latest uh, Wi Fi driver. Uh, with uh, as much, but we don't want to check it every day. We want to do it every. I'm sorry, Tom. You have had problems with mic. So one second.
Can you? Yeah, okay, so um, my comments on, on the PR. Um, Can you hear me now? Good channel, please? Excuse me? Can you hear me now better? Yeah, it's uh, yes, much it's a better. bit better. Yes, you were indeed. Uh, the audio was not too good from your side uh, previously. Uh, um, from some, so my from comments time on your time, I need to. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so my comments on your pull request. Um, this, yeah, I'm a bit concerned if the platform for some reason doesn't doesn't have an MK temp binary or whatever, then you could be RM RFing uh, the wrong directory. So that's um, maybe a concern, I don't know. Um, yeah, this redirect can be done in one. Uh, apart from that, it looks good. So, yeah, I think there it is, looks good. There is one, uh, well, just uh, one second. There is one thing that we are doing here that uh, maybe can, optimi can be optimized. I didn't find a way to do that. Uh, I'm using a CURL to basically uh, fetch the archive of the all, all of the all of the output so if you, if you go to uh, if you if you just take this url and open it in the browser it will download the entire archive which includes not only the ipk it includes a bunch of other stuff so this uh, line of code takes around 10 to 20 seconds to run uh, and the uh, Maybe it's not. Maybe it can optimize. Can be optimized because there is a way to fetch the actual IPK, only the IPK. But for that, we need to know the name of the IPK. So this is something that uh, I didn't find exactly how to do that. Uh, I'm sure it's possible, but it's something that uh, is. If someone is familiar with the way to get it. Uh, only the IPK. The reason I, I couldn't get the IPK is because the name of the IPK is changing for every release. And the artifacts.zip doesn't. And then after I download the artifacts.zip, I can tell you. Yeah. Yeah, never mind. So, so yeah, this is the uh, this is the reason. This is something that uh, you could have written in a comment. Uh, someone, someone who is uh, you can say that uh, maybe if you if you, you were using CURL and unzip, we need to add it to the dependencies in the readme if there, if it's not already there. Um, Actually, I think uh, the best would be to um, make. Uh, Simlink, uh, does that work? I think it it even works. I think if you make a simlink uh, to the IPK file, so from the, the build script, we can make a simlink to the IPK file, and then you can download it directly, I think. Mm, this would be nice. Yes. How, 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 can we, how can we create the simlink? From the ah from yeah. the build script you mean yeah that could be ah. a good idea because I don't think there is a way to list the the files uh, without using a, a token um, yeah it's a it's a great idea so please write it in the review comment uh, and I think for 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 this kind of things uh, normally wait before you uh, write it down uh, what we do normally is uh, you you decide if you want to request changes or you can approve, uh, just put a comment or you can approve if you approve and you leave com if you think that it is uh, almost good enough and uh, uh, there are some small changes that can, can be should be made you can put a comment and saying that uh, uh, generally it's looking good but uh, consider changing this and that and then the owner of the pull request uh, can decide uh, normally, I, for what I do always is uh, I take it into consideration, and then I, normally I just do whatever it was requested. It saves a, a bit of time because I don't need to request review again because it's already approved. Um, if it's something that you think is um, re very important, then by all means request changes. Uh, if you just have a comment, then put a comment.
Okay. Okay. So um, I'm fine with approving this uh, in the way it is right now. Um, yeah. Great. Thank you. There's a comment in the chat saying OpenWT has tool, OPKG. OPKG. I'm just reading the, the comment from the chat. I don't know anything about it. OPKG is the tool uh, for working with the IPK. Yeah. IPKG is the, it's the name of the package. It's a format. So um, yeah, for um, for the new people, um, so basically, Han, I think um, one of the things I, I could do is um, I could approve this this um, this uh, PR like I did, um, but there might still be issues that I want to have to look at first. Um, so I don't want Mergeify to merge stuff automatically, which I believe it doesn't do anymore un until you mark it ready to merge anyway, but. But still, if I want to be totally sure, I can uh, tag it as don't merge. No, we, we, we stop doing the don't merge. So unless there yes. is a specific reason to add it, uh, for now we're going to assume. I mean, I want to try to remove it. So. Right. So that was a question earlier uh, from Ram, I believe, uh, why there is a don't merge in some of the PRs. And that's the reason, basically. Um, previously, we had configured mer Mergeify that it would always do the merge uh, unless there is a don't merge tag. Um, of course, only once uh, all of the other conditions are met. So if there are sufficient reviews and test pass on the hit up and things like that. Um, but if, if that was the case, then, uh, then Mergeify would automatically merge it unless there was a don't merge tag. And maybe you want to approve something, um, but uh, you want uh, the the person who authored the PR to take a look at some of your comments and, and give, it, give him or, or her the opportunity to change something. And then we would add the don't merge uh, label. Okay, it's like hold, uh, your, hold, your, um, hold your marriage until you read the comments. It's not yeah. exactly don't merge for the auto tool, it's for the one where all the PR just Take a moment to read the comments and decide that. How, more, how much more time do we have, uh, Frederick? Uh, we have until um, half past, well, uh, time zones. Uh, we have uh, about one more hour in total. Okay, so but, I uh, suggest that, that time now... For questions and a small break. Yeah, so I suggest that now we go over a pull request that is already approved, but I think it's a... Uh, uh, a very, very good example of how to, uh, uh, of the workflow, much better than the small pull request I make. Uh, so let's go and have a look at uh, number uh, 977. So this is a long, long one. It's already approved. It has the don't merge tag because uh, Mario wanted to uh, uh, this probably fix a bunch of other a bunch of the other comments that were not uh, not critical. But we can we can go. No, wait. This is one commit. I was I was think I meant another one. Ah, probably it's already merged. Ah, the collect link matrix three eight two. 831. Yeah. So this one is a very good uh, example for a uh, pull request, uh, how we expect, uh, how we want every pull request to look. Uh, it has its own task, which Mario created. We can go over the task. Basically, it's uh, for collecting metrics for uh, Ethernet link. Um, so th this is the task that uh, Ronald created, sorry. Uh, Ronald, do you want to give some background? About link metric collection? Yes. 
because I was thinking that it, it will be good to have uh, to browse through the changes, commit after commit. This will uh, to show how we review code, uh, how we expect the code to look when we review it, uh, the way it's split to commits, um, go over some of our comments to see what is a nitpick, what is not a nitpick. So the, the issue is, well, it's a, it's a feature, uh, link metrics. So link metrics are um, basically information about uh, every interface, uh, how many packets have been sent and how many packets have been received. Um, so that requires, uh, and yeah, it's, it's uh, uh, provided on demand. So there is a link metrics request and then a link metrics response. Uh, and so it's normally the controller that does the link metrics request, but actually any device can do that. Um, so what we need for that is to first uh, collect the link metrics and second to uh, create an, uh, a message containing the link metrics. Uh, the message itself already existed. So this pull request adds the actual collection of link metrics and putting them in a message. So uh, filling in the, the data of the message. Uh, Thomas, is your taking the lead? Maybe you should take the screen as well. Yes, sorry. You're talking to me, right? Not to Mario. Yeah, to, to you. Okay. So, first commit is, uh, you can see adding link metric collectors interface and Ethernet implementation. Uh, so basically, we see that uh, Mario is defining a structure to all the collected link metrics. Um, there is a detailed description as we expect for a commit, a good commit, a commit message. Uh, we can see a new file, completely new file that has been added. Uh, we have the copyright header, uh, which has to be exactly like this. You can put your own company's uh, copyright, but uh, the format of the license should be the same. Uh, good, lots of good documentation. Uh, you can see that the comments which are open, these are discussions that are still uh, taking place. Uh, conversations that are closed uh, are discussions that uh, you can open one, show conversation. So um, I, I suggested something uh, and then uh, Mario can decide if to do it or not. So he did it and he resolved the conversation. Uh, so then, uh, so this is basically the, the commit message. We, the commit, we go over the commit. I, I just read the entire code. I had some ideas and uh, comments and the note had some ideas and comments and we all uh, work together to review the commit. Uh, so a very important thing, we, we won't all go over the entire commit here. You are encouraged to do that later. But the very important thing is to see how the uh, commit message is built. Uh, it always starts with the, it, everything is in the, um, uh, in the contributing MD, but it starts with the component name, then the uh, subcomponent if needed, and, and, and then the commit deadline. This is a commit that is uh, wrongly placed. It's an updating auto-generated file, uh, but it should come after because actually the, the TLB factory which generates the auto-generated file is uh, only, uh, I mean, all of the YAML file changes like fixed type or error, you see there below TLBF, add media type group, fixed type, uh, type or error, this, uh, this is causing a change to the auto-generated files. Uh, so the auto-generated commit should come after. Uh, the reason we there is a, it is important to uh, the, to have commits in order is that uh, we want every commit unit to be a, a closed a, to basically build and be a, 
so we can do a, a binary search and uh, git bisect easily to find the uh, errors although we never had to so far um, so we have uh, a lot of changes here uh, it's a big pull request but every commit uh, stands on its own and uh, can uh, uh, can be built and uh, can be tested and uh, basically every commit uh, doesn't break anything then you can see the fix ups so what is a fix up is basically a, a way to uh, to fix a specific commit uh, after uh, getting uh, feedback from uh, one of the uh, other uh, colleagues that reviewed your commit uh, for here here in this example, it fixes a specific commit, and the, the what's nice about fixup is that you, you do git commit uh, dash dash fixup and the commit commit number, then the reviewer can see the change easily that uh, it, you actually fixed what is suggested, and then later on when you decide to uh, squash everything, uh, you can squash only the fixups uh, to the correct place by using it uh, a rebase, interactive rebase with the, with the auto squash uh, option. And yeah, that's it. Yeah, it's a very big uh, PR. Yeah. It's a, that's a big one, but uh, it's important to understand how to review a big pull request. And actually, 16 commits is a bit too much. Okay, if you get to a point that you have 16 commits or 20 commits, it's time to split to uh, uh, more than one pull request. Okay, maybe 16 commits is uh, it's including the fix up and uh, some small uh, changes to TLVF, so it's uh, not that big, that much, but. Uh, uh, you should split your changes to uh, commits. Uh, a change should be, it, it takes some time, but then you, you get the, a, the grasp of what should be a separate commit and what not. You can ask anyone who uh, works on the project and they wasn't used to it uh, before. Um, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so uh, in general, um, in my previous jobs, I don't know, uh, Tomer, uh, how you like it, but uh, I used to say uh, if it's more than 500 lines changed, then it should really have been uh, multiple, uh, multiple, uh, well, we used uh, merge requests, but uh, I guess the same for pull requests. But, uh, but yes, uh, it depends. Uh, some, some things are not so easy to split up. Yes. The, the, the problem with multiple policies. This can be. Sorry. The problem with multiple policies is that you have to uh, do a lot of prebases. We uh, we played a bit with the stacked pull requests in the in the past. Uh, so what I normally do is uh, if I have a big change that I know that it would take a lot of time, we had it in DCS for example. We just play. Plan to do uh, everything that we can. It's like uh, you can say, okay, this is a pull request that builds the infrastructure only. So you prepare the infrastructure, then you uh, let the community start reviewing your code, and in the meanwhile, you start working on the next pull request, and then you call it patch one, patch two, patch three. Uh, so but we do it. We, we also did it in uh, there is currently a patch number two uh, pull request by Coral. Uh, so this is how we expect big pull requests to look like. So for example, for both farm, if there will be changes, I expect to see both from patch one out of X or something, you know, adding adding this and that and uh, providing this and that. But for no most of the cases one pull request is enough. So basically adding the adding flows and buffing. Problem with splitting pull requests over several pull requests is that it's a bit harder to see where it's going. Yeah. Um, so if you have a pull request that just adds infrastructure, you don't see how the infrastructure is going to be used, and that makes things a bit more difficult to review. And vice versa, also when 
uh, you're adding infrastructure. Uh, you don't know yet what. Uh, I mean, it's possible that that uh, you you made a mistake somewhere and didn't uh, like give a function enough parameters, or you forgot a member of a struct or something like that. Um, and so, if you if you have it everything in one pull request, then you can update it and and do fix ups before the whole thing is merged. Um, so there is some merit in doing everything in build, big pull requests as well. Uh, but it depends a bit on the circumstances. Sometimes also we ask uh, from a big pull request to split off a few commits and already make a, a separate pull request of those because they can be merged and they're pretty independent of the rest. Um, so yeah, there are several uh, possible ways to approach it. Yeah. One, regarding okay. the big, the big pull request, uh, one more comment regarding the big pull request. If you, if you normally what we ask is to, for a person to basically write the DR. Okay, and we use the issue, the GitHub issues uh, to write the hours. We can go, uh, you can show uh, Frederick maybe any uh, Mohan's issue, latest issue that he, we, you write the DR in the issue page and then, uh, and then we discuss it. And the 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 and then everyone is aligned on what will be the first page, second page, and so forth. Because you know how to look, because you already spoke about it in the other. So, the issue, not the public request. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry, Tomer, but your audio is uh, pretty bad again. So. <laughs> Now it's probably better after I reset the headset. Yes. Uh, so which one? Right. The, the top one. So you see all of this. Uh, problem with different uh, approaches, uh, proposed solution, uh, brief about the, uh, what is discovery because this uh, DR is detecting topology changes, so topology discovery, split to phases, some tasks, uh, and then you can also mark uh, which tasks have been done. Uh, so uh, different, pull, different commits, different pull requests. You can also add uh, uh, drawings and uh, screenshots, whatever you want. So, uh, and then normally you create the issue uh, and then you uh, schedule a meeting and we all discuss the architecture of the solution. Uh, we discuss it also over, uh, the, over the issue page. So we can, uh, uh, this can be done in before the meeting or after the meeting. Uh, and that's that's about the. This is the only way to design something and discuss it. Uh, we, we, such a huge change cannot be uh, reviewed without the discussion first uh, and the and the design review. I mean, it can, but it's less efficient. So I already saw that, uh, for example, uh, Anton uh, writes a very good issues. Uh, I saw some of his issues. He, he had the uh, drawings and the things that very uh, are very helpful to understand the, what the person is talking about because we are working remotely, everyone, and uh, we don't talk all the time. So uh, being uh, uh, writing good issues, uh, clear description, good commit messages, uh, basically. Uh, one thing, one other thing I wanted to say is that commit messages are like a, a way to tell a story. You want to explain your way of thinking, the, the way that you solve, for example, if you solve a bug and now uh, did it once uh, in one of the pull requests. So we actually uh, created, reproduced the bug in one commit. Uh, this is something that we ask to do as often as possible. We want to show in one commit how the bug is reproduced and then we fix the bug and then we revert the 
the hack that we did to reproduce the commit, and then we can squash it after the review if we want. But it, it was really easy and fun to review the change because it, uh, it very much helps the reader. I'm sorry, can you please a few words about the hack for chain of selection? What hack? Uh, you said uh, after pulling changes, you will remove the hack which was merged. No, not that. It was not. It was not in channel selection. It was something else. But uh, it, it basically, may, or not you remember the pull request? It's. Uh, it's yeah, yeah. It's uh, infamous five sixty fix. Um, yeah. I'm trying to find it With, again. Uh, it was the. Uh, Again, the padding, wrong padding or something. If you if you look for padding, then you'll find it. Uh, 819. Yeah, proper padding of public key. Oh, okay, thank you. I will check. So this one is a very nice, another very nice pull request to review. Uh, so, so Frederick, you can stay in this page for a second. You, so you can see, uh, agent controller auto configure debugging key calculation and then there is the second commit is forcing smaller key you can click on the three buttons and then we can see the in the yeah so so we also see that uh, lots of references with uh, uh, in github you 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 can refer refer to a, a specific commit pull request even a, a discussion in a pull request inside inside the commit you can refer to everything and it's very convenient uh, the second commit is uh, basically forcing the issue to reproduce uh, then the actual the third commit is the actual uh, fix then we have two uh, commits which reverts the the hacks that uh, are now did to uh, easily reproduce and show the issue and some other uh, general uh, things that were part of this pull request so in this case it was a, we even kept the revert commit because uh, like we do now uh, it's a way to show people how to uh, how a good pull request should look like. So, and there are plenty. You can look in the history and just uh, find a pull request. And I think it's uh, every new contributor to the project should uh, spend a day or two browsing through the old merged pull requests and issues and uh, seeing. You can look for, you can search for pull requests based on comments, for example. Even better, uh, you can browsing. Find pull requests. Even better is browsing the open pull requests and doing reviews. Yes. <laughs> browsing the what? The, the open, open pull yeah. requests. Yeah. Yes. That's even better. But if you're not okay, sure, yeah. if uh, you're new so and you don't know. Yeah. So does anyone else, yeah, else have an open pull request that they want us to, to look at? I'm thinking maybe it's a good time now to decide if you scroll a bit down. Uh, there are a few which have some discussion and no conclusion. Uh, like... These two here, wait for platform tests, uh, are they still relevant? Because they, they have been open for a long time. I say merge and uh, if, uh, if it will cause an issue... Where, where is Moran? Let's, let's ask Moran if uh, Moran doesn't respond, then we can merge it. Well, he's, uh, he is in the call, so I hope he answers. Yeah, I'm here. What is the question? So there are two pull requests that are wait. They have a special label: wait for platform test. Uh, this is the first one: remove network before scan. Uh, um, yeah, basically so, we need to test that to MUGW. 
this is the platform the problem uh, we found the problem on uh, but uh, we didn't have a uh, uh, time or priority to check it until now. So perhaps uh, if it's looking good and we can, we can just merge it and when you get to the point that you need to test it, then just it will be part of master. What do you say? Uh, if it's okay with Alex, uh, we wanted to test it on the platform. So. But Alex is not on the call, I guess. Doesn't look like it. I say yeah, if it looks it's, okay. It's not for me to decide, so. Hmm. Okay, and what about the next one? Uh, it's mine? No, it's mine. Simpli no, this is uh, our notes. Simplify and perceive. So this is a, a small refactoring. Um, but yeah, since we don't test any algorithms except for the client theory, uh, uh, it's possible that I did something wrong there and something breaks. Ah, yeah, but so, Moran said it's already merged. Look, look a bit down. These commits have been merged as part of 659. Really? Well, this is, looks like a problem because uh, uh, we have, uh, because Moran merged uh, two features in one pull request, so. No, oh, I did it. So I probably uh, uh, started a new branch from the branch which has this commit instead of from master, and then pushed that branch and nobody noticed that this, this commit was in there. Yeah. This is very, very rare that we do mistakes and uh, don't follow the contributing and the, normally we are uh, sure. perfect. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we can just close it, I guess. But let me check if it's really... Uh, I don't actually see it in, in master. Okay, uh, any other PRs that uh, we, we should look at? So I wanted to suggest looking at the um, Docker file for Purple Door T-Rex 40 builds. This one? Yep. So, okay, so this is a draft pull request. Yep, it's draft. Yeah. So, I think I can close it because no, because it's you don't want to because we have a Docker uh, file for building this. As I understand from comments, community don't want to have other two chains for building and other ways. So, so we can close it. It's, yeah. I mean, it's not that we don't want other uh, tool chains per se. It's just that uh, we don't understand why you want what 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 uh, the reason is to um, want the, this. Main, uh, the main idea was uh, to prepare one unified Docker file and scripts for developers for building a full image in easiest way. So you just need to run few scripts and you will build the image for for Rux 40 with purple mesh. Uh, I mean purple WRT with purple mesh. So using just few commands and uh, it it's inside the Docker. So it's like independent environment. <clears throat> that exists already, so that's a bit why don't 
Okay. So if you if you say we, you can close it because you you have enough with with what exists already, then uh, we can close it. Then. Well, sure. Is everyone uh, okay okay with this? Okay, closed. Because it was not intended to be merged. Uh, can you repeat that? So the my, my pull request, which was accidentally merged, I reverted the commit again that was accidentally merged. So the pull request okay. is still relevant. Um, I'm sorry. Do we have a flow for reverts? For example. Uh, if we need to do revert for master, need to create new issue and explain why we need to revert this. It's like correct flow, I think. Uh, yes, basically. Well, it's uh, usually your revert is going to be part part of a pull request. I mean, if you revert something, then usually you need to add something else as well to do uh, the to do something similar to what was originally intended, but that didn't work, right? Interesting. Because uh, it's a good idea when if we need to revert something, just create the issue, describe, and create the pull request with, re with reverting. So it's a good history, and we can always see uh, reverts and why this was, was reverted, and so on, etc. <clears throat> okay, uh, let's look at one more PR. So uh, this time I'm picking the one. Uh, resolve file name. Use the same file for all debug levels. So uh, this one is uh, by Vitali. Uh, so Vitali with two eyes. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So I have a concern about that, uh, and that is, as far as I understand, but I have not actually tried it. Uh, so in uh, RDKB and also in UGW, I think, uh, there is a lock rotation done. Uh, and as far as I understand, that is done in Easy Logging Plus Plus itself. So uh, when the file, it's either every day or when the file grows bigger than a certain size, I don't remember that either, uh, then the file is closed and a new one is created. Now, I think with this change, uh, the new one, new file that is created is going to be the same one, it's going to have the same file name as the, as the original one, so it's not going to, uh, it's going to overwrite the, the, the same file again, so you basically lose the old log, while the idea of a log rotation is actually that you have uh, like five old log files lying around, uh, which you can upload to a cloud server, and um, and you only remove the oldest one. But do we need the log rotation? It's used in RDKB or UGW or both, as far as I understand. Okay, so, so what else would you suggest then? Um, so, well, yes. Yeah, what I would suggest is to find another solution. <laughs> uh, I don't know, did I, in my review, Right, a suggestion about how it could be solved. The the log rotation is done by the easy logging plus plus or by other means. Who, who is taking care for the rotation? I think it's easy logging plus plus. But I'm not one percent sure. If it's easy not, plus plus, it's uh, 
relatively simple to to do because it just means you have to uh, reset your boolean uh, when you rotate the logs. Okay, but but normally you use another external application to rotate your logs, like log rotator. No, that's, that, that, that's definitely not the case. Not the case here. No. Okay. Actually, if I remember correctly, the logs are rotated by easy logging. Um, you, are, you are very broken up. It's uh, almost impossible to hear what you say. And now? That's yes, much better. But, um, okay. So what, what I was saying that uh, we do use, we, we did use at some point the external circle. I'm sorry, Vitali. Uh, I just can't hear you very well. Now it's better? Yes. Yes. So what I was saying is uh, that we, we don't use the automatic log rotation mechanism by easy logging. Um, we force it to rotate the logs by reconfiguring it when we want the rotation to be done. Uh, but the problem that you described will still occur because we, we use the same instance. But so we could actually, when reconfiguring, reset the ruling flag and that would resolve the issue as well. Yeah. Yeah, I think the resolution you proposed should work, uh, but we should also think because easy logging is actually an external library. So we should probably think, uh, uh, we eventually, uh, I guess, we'd like to uh, merge everything upstream. So we need to think if this change is good enough to be upstream. We need to consider this as well. Okay. Um, we can definitely send it upstream and then get feedback from upstream. If if, if upstream is man maintained, and it, lately it, it isn't. Yeah. Okay, Vitali Komisarenko, uh, you know what to do then. Uh, well, uh, I, I think yes. <laughs> uh, I need to investigate how uh, uh, log rotation is done and uh, how to solve the potential issue of uh, overwriting uh, log files. Okay. A commit that can potentially be uh, merged into the library. Yeah, um, I think this is another um, good um, opportunity to use the trick that uh, Tomas mentioned and that uh, Arnaud demonstrated. So um, what you can do here is first add a commit that adds, um, that, uh, that makes the problem always occur. And then, uh, so, so that uh, the problem becomes apparent. Um, and, uh, and then add your fix and then uh, and then uh, remove the, the hack again. So uh, uh, you could you, do something like that. Uh, you mean by squashing? No need to keep uh, the bad commit in uh, in the tree. Yes, yes. You revert the bad commit before. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Make sure to do that. <laughs> okay. Um, then uh, to finish off. Um, what I'd like to do is, um, I think we've done uh, enough of this. Um, I think you get the point. Uh, while it's very fun to go through the pull requests, and uh, I hope you will uh, continue to do so in the days to come. Um, let's uh, switch gears for now and um, reflect on uh, the presentations that have been made. So, um, 
Can I, can, just, can I take the floor for a second uh, before we, we finish? Um, okay. Do you want to share or? Yes, I'll just capture the screen from you. I am master, I can do everything. Um, <laughs> so uh, what I would like everybody to do at some point is to uh, get rid of some stale branches because we have a lot of branches uh, in our repository and many of those are probably not really useful anymore. So if you go to uh, the, sorry, I'll go to the beginning. If you go to the repository and then to branches, you see 105 branches, that's really quite a lot. Um, if you go to your branches, there you see all the branches that you've created, which in my case is quite a lot as well. Um, so there you should take a look and see, uh, is this really still relevant? And if not, uh, delete it. Um, also like a feature we can add into the CI uh, branch deletion after merging. That's already done. So merge pull requests are, uh, the branch requests are deleted. Uh, but so you see my old branches here, uh, there are a few for open pull requests, that's fine. Uh, there are a few, uh, these ones, they're for closed pull requests. So pull requests that didn't make it through. Uh, but where we didn't delete the branch yet because it was possibly still useful. Um, but this one, for instance, if there is only a support, support. I know that that one is fully merged now. And if there is anything not merged, it's no longer relevant. So I can kill that one. Um, so yeah, so look at your old branches and see if there is something there that, uh, well, if, if you really need to keep all of them. That was all. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, so, uh, let's see. Um, do share the desktop. Okay, so um, what I want to do is um, I'm going to make an election. Uh, about uh, which presentation you thought um, was best. So uh, by extension, uh, who made the best presentation? So uh, let's, um, let's add everything in here. So you can uh, talk among, amongst yourselves while I'm doing this. <laughs> Why, you're well prepared. Um, also, I have a question about YouTube channel. So, um, a few lectures was removed, uh, uh, two videos, uh, when Tomer showed how to launch tests and how to uh, find and check bugs and etc. Can we get that uh, videos back? Yeah, so they were removed because um, they contained uh, proprietary Wi-Fi Alliance uh, documents. Uh, so we uh, read through them uh, extensively to go over um, uh, the test description. Um, and the problem with that is that these documents are copyright Wi-Fi Alliance and they are not allowed to be uh, redistributed by us, uh, even uh, just a small part in the video. Um, so we have to take them down just to avoid uh, that people get upset because um, David was a uh, telling me that uh, someone uh, that attended the meeting uh, uh, pointed this out to him. And so, um, yeah, we have to be careful there. Oh, okay. So that's the reason. Um, but um, that's, that's the reason. But um, Walter is, uh, has actually volunteered to um, take a crack at editing the videos and uh, maybe just cutting those pieces of it out. Um, so that we can uh, we can still publish them, and I might we might be able to share the the, um, the whole video internally as well, uh, so long as you don't um, basically so long as you don't uh, give the link to other people. Uh, so if you keep it to yourself, then uh, then maybe we can uh, we can just share it um, like that, because uh, all of the videos are on own clouds by the way. Um, so we put them there uh, for so that Shelly can then uh, take them and uh, upload them to YouTube. 
um, but they are all still there, um, and I can maybe show that. So um, uh, that's the wrong code clouds. Actually, I have to open here. So yeah, uh, we have a diagnostic for face cloud meeting, and all the videos are here. Um, so I can uh, I can share the link. Uh, so see public link. Copy. Open chat. And I can uh, paste the link in here. Uh, send to everyone. There we go. So if you really want to uh, see everything, then it's there. Uh, just be careful uh, who you show the video to. I'm sorry. Everyone can open this, or we need uh, special accounts for this? Everybody can. Can view it and download from it. Okay, thanks. okay, almost done here. Okay, that's all of them. Candidates, one winner only. Okay, safe information. You must have at least one voter. I know. Ah, here, here we go. Enter emails. Just add. Just add what? Uh, you can, if you want, uh, can you open the GitHub uh, participants and copy all mails? By one, by a few clicks. Can't, can't get the mails from GitHub, so. Yeah. Um, I actually. Wait, this is the wrong one. Uh, I, you have all email addresses, so okay. Yes, I, I have um, a lot of email addresses here. Um, so let's see. Enter emails. There we go. Control A so you can see it. So we have uh, Anton, Adam, Alex, Amrita, Arnaud, uh, Bor Boris, Coral, uh, Eduardo, Gal, uh, Itai, Jonathan, Juan Carlos, Lior, Mila, Mario, Moran, Nikolai, Rafael, uh, Tomer, uh, Vlad Tupikin, uh, Vitali Komisarenko, and uh, we should add uh, at least uh, Vitali. Um, so, uh, I think Ram is not in there yet. Is it just Vitali at developer.com or? Yeah, yeah. That's right. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's, uh, Ram is not in there yet either. And it didn't work. I guess the mail is only something else is separated. Um, you didn't edit me. I'm going to do a different approach, sorry. Uh, so I have the list of things and I just create poll instead of election, it's simpler. Uh, you can only create a poll in 
three items. Yes. If you have more than three items, you have to pay. No, you don't. Uh, I've created a poll with uh, with like eight uh, options uh, before. Remember, uh, that was uh, the one about um, which team we would have uh, next for uh, the Purple Mesh project. Okay. I don't have more than three items at a time. I have zero items. And items are only available for one week, but that doesn't matter. So I don't know why it's not working. Um, let's do it differently. Um, so um, we don't need uh, fancy voting systems like that. I'm just going to put the, the things here, or actually better maybe in a spreadsheet. And, um, and uh, we'll just go through the list. And um, we'll go through the list, and everyone can, uh, can just say which ones they, they prefer. So come on, Google. Finish loading. New. Stop. There we go. Okay. So um, I'm going to go through the list um, of uh, people here in this um, in the Zoom meeting. And uh, and uh, and we will just say which one we pre preferred. So Arnold, you go first. You're first in the list. So just one, one option? Yes. Uh, UTF presentation. OK. Then, um, Adam, which one did you, uh, which one did you prefer? Come back to me later. I didn't have time to think. Sorry. <laughs> OK, uh, Boris. Okay, uh, we're skipping Boris then. Um, Eduardo. Okay. Um. Which presentation that you saw was the best? I think it, it was the one from uh, Etomer. I like the most. The hands -on session. The hands -on session? This one? Yes, yes, that one. That one. Okay. I want to jump in. Uh, I decided. Uh, I think the GA Gen Max Linear, I liked it a lot. Okay. Good to know. Um, then, uh, Mario, which one did you prefer? Uh, number 11, CI and certification should have presentation. Okay. Then, uh, Moran. Uh, the UTAF. The UTAF presentation. I see uh, Arnold is helping me uh, out. Yeah. Uh, Ram. Ram, are you there? Uh, 
Oké, okay, skipping rand voor nou. Uh, Rafael. Uh, G.H.N. Uh, G.H.N. Oké. Tom F. I vote for the CI. CI test. Oké. Frederik, Boris votes for one. So for uh, introduction. Oké. Okay. Ja, yeah, I'm not monitoring the chat for now. Uh, let's just see. Uh, ja, oké. Okay. That's fine. Um, oké, okay, um, so then uh, Vitali Komisarenko. Uh, number 13, uh, code review and uh, backlog uh, cleaning session. Ah, okay, interesting. Um, then uh, Vladislav Safonov. Oké, okay, uh, skipping uh, Vladislav Safonov voor nu. Uh, Vladislav, to pick in. Ja, yeah, I'm here. So, I think uh, number three about drugs agent and controller. Oké. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Walter, if you uh, enable your microphone. Uh, Yeah, I don't think he will be. Uh, I don't think he will be voting. Uh, so uh, we have our. Let's see here our totals. Uh, Did you see Boris's message? Yes. Yes. Oké, okay, so it's a contest between the Maxinier presentation, the hands-on session, the Utah presentation and the CI and certification presentation uh, demo. So, uh, did you vote for uh, I didn't vote, no. <laughs> uh, we have four choices. And the Oscar goes yeah. to... So um, I actually think the G of HN presentation uh, I enjoyed most of all because it's really um, yeah. So I'm voting for that one. So I guess that's the winner. Uh -huh. Okay. Um, so um, I will be sending the reward to uh, <laughs> to Valencia then. Uh, So Mario, you can uh, you can tell uh, Marcos that uh, that he is one, uh, or you can just uh, keep the reward for yourself. <laughs> I do it. Okay. That's the dark path. I guess you have to send it to his home address because nobody's going to be in the office to to accept it. Uh, no, I guess not. And uh, Marcos, yeah. Marcos works in Barcelona, not in Valencia. <laughs> But anyway, uh, okay. we, are, we are confined right now. And maybe for uh, one month at least, we'll be working from here. Yes. Do you know that today uh, is uh, Father's Day here in Spain? I say that for uh, Darth Vader's famous sentence, I'm your father. Can you repeat it, please, Mario? That today is the Father's Day here in Spain. So it's a nice present, the Darth Vader figure, or the, the, the famous sentence, I'm your father. <laughs> okay, uh, that's, uh, that's a good point. So, uh, uh, I don't know, um, is there a place where I could copy this from? Uh, 
from of the names at least. Uh, Um, okay, um, so now I want to vote on um, who makes the, the best um, the best or most insightful comments or remarks or questions. Basically, um, yeah, who improved your presentation the most? Apart from you, of course. So, yeah. Okay. So, um, what is the question uh, again? Who made the best uh, comments or question? So, um, the most insightful question, the best comment, the best. Uh, Unexpected uh, remark uh, made during a presentation. This is to reward people for paying attention. Okay. Um, I see. That. I not. Well, I wanted to say. Ben, but you have not included him, so I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Um, this this is not complete. So um, let's add. Uh, Okay. Okay. Then uh, Adam. Um, I actually don't remember the name uh, person that asked uh, regarding the DCS about the limitations of uh, utilization of the, the channels. Uh, not sure it's part of the team. Um, I don't remember the name. Sorry. Does anybody okay, else? And, uh, yes. Uh, there weren't many questions in the DC. Sorry. <laughs> you said in the presentation, so. Yeah, but it doesn't have to be your presentation. It can be any ah. presentation. Uh, yeah. In general, um, yeah. Okay. Um, maybe we leave you, leave you some time to think about it and uh, okay. continue to. Um, okay. Yeah. So, um, Eduardo, have you woken up yet? <laughs> yep. Okay, uh, who did, who do, whose comments uh, or insights did you enjoy the most? So, uh, the, yeah. From the presenters or from the uh, from the public or I don't know. Yeah, from the audience. Mm, maybe the ones from. Walter uh, Crutens. From Walter, yeah, that's uh, that's a good point. He made a lot of uh, insightful comments. Mario, who do you think you made the best comments? Sorry. Who do you think made the best comments or uh, most insightful question? My vote. Goes to Ran. He has uh, been the, the most curious and, and the one who made the most uh, the, the most uh, number of questions. So, okay. Uh, Moran, what do you think? Um, I think Ran. Okay. Uh, then, uh, Ram, what do you think? And uh, try not to vote for your, yourself. No, I, I, um, I, I vote for Tomer. Explain to you issues uh, quite uh, simple from my understanding. 
So I'll take Tommy. Okay, that's uh, that's fair. Vitali Komisarenko, who do you vote for? Uh, I vote for Ron. No? Yes. Okay. That uh, seems pretty pretty clear clear to me. But uh, Vladislav. So I think uh, Toma asked you a question about test setups, etc. Okay. Very nice. Um, and for what it's worth, uh, my vote also goes to Walter. I think he uh, made a couple of uh, nice uh, corrections um, uh, that were very helpful. Excuse so, me. Um, uh, also, Tom. Ah, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry. Uh, indeed. So, um, Rafael. Um, run, definitely. Not, uh, not specifically for my presentation, but, but overall. Okay. Tomé? Can you repeat that, Tomé? I didn't hear you. Walter. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I believe everyone voted. So, uh, Rami voted. Rami uh, seems to be the winner. So, uh, congratulations, Ram. Uh, 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 go well on Zoom. <laughs> give me a few words to say. Um, I've been in few. Um, I've been new to few uh, uh, places with many people, and this is one of the most welcomes uh, I've ever get. So thank you. <laughs> okay. Um, so you get uh, this uh, exciting uh, figure of RTD2, which is also usable as a USB stick. So. Uh, I hope you are happy with that. <laughs> so, um, so uh, send me through Slack or some other way. Uh, send me your um, your address so I can uh, put it in the mail. And uh, and yeah, it would be nice if we could um, get an uh, address for Mar Marcos as well than uh, Mario. I'll do it. Okay, so uh, now it's uh, time for the stress relief session. So um, actually, I updated my presentation. Yeah, so uh, the game is um, that we usually play. So the fallback game is uh, Zonotic. And uh, since Lior and Gal didn't come up with something better, uh, that's what the one we're going to play. Uh, so this is the IP address, uh, or you could also use the hostname ftp.essentium.com. Okay. So um, yeah. So uh, keep keep Zoom open, and we uh, we just use it for um, for audio, so um, we can uh, yell at each other for killing us and things like that. So it's very nice. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm going to stop sharing my screen now yeah. and uh, start the game. <laughs> I think your laptop will not like it if you continue sharing your screen. Uh, yeah, exactly. Okay, so thanks everyone and uh, see you in the game. Uh, about recording, we still recording the video from the Zoom. Maybe we can stop. Yeah, Arnaz, 
you can stop the recording now.